Hello everyone. I'm Miss Heather from the Tewksbury Public Library and I'd like to welcome you back to a little Einstein science. Today we are going to be talking about a few different things. Some of it has to do with biology, some of it has to do with physics. So today we'll be talking about the human body, about bones and our skeleton. We will also be talking about how plants grow with pumpkins. We'll also be talking about static electricity and spider webs. So a little bit of biology with the spider webs, a little bit of physics with how they work, and a little bit of physics in talking about static electricity, talking about energy. So let's get started. So some supplies that you might need today include a balloon, a piece of tissue paper. I've already put mine into the shape of a ghost. If you'd like to do that too, that is a fun idea. You will also need some yarn, a paper plate, a hole punch, and if you picked up a bag of supplies at the library, it did have a lot of these things in there already. And it has some papers in there as well with some other activities to do. And if you have one at home, a pumpkin or another fruit or another vegetable, but something that was once growing would be the best to get the most out of this activity. So gather your supplies and meet me right back here and we'll get ready for the first activity. All right, so the first thing we'll be doing today is the activity with the balloon, learning about static electricity. So go ahead and blow up your balloon. And once you have it blown up, it doesn't have to be too big, any size will do. I want you to take your balloon and rub it all along the top of your head. And then I want you to try and pick up your ghostly piece of tissue paper. Let's see what happens. So rub this all on top of my head. Probably make my hair get a little crazy too. All right, look at my hair. I think it's just about ready to pick up my ghost. So I'm gonna put this right over where my ghost was. And look at that. I picked it up with my balloon. A little bit creepy, but a lot of it science. So the science behind static electricity is that opposites attract, opposite charges, and they attract, they come together. And when they're the same, they go away from each other. So we changed up the balloon and made it become negatively charged. And this tissue paper here was already negatively charged. So you saw that they just went right together. They attracted, they came together. And that's why the tissue paper ghost here stuck to that balloon. Next thing we'll be doing today is part of our biology section. This one is talking about the human body and the bones that make up our skeletons that are inside us. So in your bags, you've got a couple of different sheets about the skeletons. You got this one here that is a matching sheet. And so you can match up the words to the bones. And you also have got these larger pieces of paper that have different sections of a life-size skeleton. So these bones would be about the same size as a child who's about five years old. And these papers, if yours still have black lines around them, you want to cut right on those black lines so that you can make these papers match up together. So you can spread all these out if you have a nice floor space or maybe you want to head outside. You can spread all of these out and connect them together once you have them cut out. And you can see just how big the skeleton is of a five-year-old child. This is a life-size printout right here. So some things to try with this activity here is maybe coloring in the different sections of the body, maybe making all the leg bones one color and all the bones that make up the head a different color so you can see just all the different sections and all the different bones that make up each part. You might want to hang it up somewhere and then you can draw some labels or create some labels. Like I made some labels for myself with the ribs right here. So then I can look 
through and say, hmm, I think these are my ribs and I could put this near to the ribs so that I remember that I've labeled the ribs, I know where they are and I know what they look like. Another fun part of biology we'll be talking about today is how plants grow. So if you have a pumpkin, this is a really fun activity to do with a pumpkin. If you don't have one, if you have a fruit, maybe such as an apple, or if you have a vegetable at your house, such as a pepper, anything will do because we can still explore that fruit or vegetable that you have and talk about how it grows and also what's inside and what makes up the parts of your fruit or your vegetable. So if you have a pumpkin, go ahead and grab that. If you have something else you're using today, that's awesome. Go ahead and get that too and meet me right back here. So the first part of this will be observation. If you got a bag at the library, you got an observation sheet inside and it has all these different things for you to look for about your pumpkin and then to record them right here on this sheet. And it's really important for scientists to record what they're observing, what they're seeing, because recording helps them to remember and it helps them to realize maybe if there's a pattern in what they're seeing, they can then figure out what kind of creature it is or what kind of plant it is. So it's really important to record all your findings when you're working as a scientist. So go ahead and get that sheet out. If you don't have one of these sheets, you could use just a different sheet of paper. And it's a great idea to draw a picture of your pumpkin, to write down what you're seeing about your pumpkin. And then you can talk about the life cycle, looking over here to see all the different parts of the life cycle. And there's also a sheet in your bag that has the parts of a pumpkin and also all the different parts that make up the pumpkin when it's growing. So first the seeds, then the sprout, then the vine starts, then we've got some flowers. We've got an immature pumpkin. That means it's still growing. It's not fully matured. It's not fully ripe. And then we've got a mature pumpkin. This one's ripe. It's ready. It's orange. It looks great. It looks ready to pick. So that's how you know that's a mature pumpkin. And then we've also got different parts of the pumpkin. So I can look at my stem, how I'm holding my pumpkin right now. I think I see a little bit of the vine on there, that little curly part. I don't see the flower anymore because I've got the pumpkin. I can look at the ribs or these ridge notched parts of the pumpkin. And I can count those as well to see how many I'm seeing. I can also look at the blossom end. So this is where the flower blossomed. This was the middle of that flower when the pumpkin was growing. And of course, I can also look at the rind. This is the outside of the pumpkin, the rind, the hard part that protects all the inside parts. And then if you would like to, you could test if your pumpkin floats or if it sinks. You could do some experiments with your pumpkin. If you have a grown up to help you, you could cut a hole around the top and then open it up. And then you could scoop out the seeds and anything else that's inside there. And you, maybe you can count the seeds. You can even eat the seeds too. You could roast them up with some spices and they taste really yummy. And of course you can measure your pumpkin too. So you can get out your trusty ruler. I have mine right here. And you can measure the stem, how tall the stem is. You could get its circumference and its diameter. Maybe if you have a ruler that bends a little bit called a measuring tape that can go all the way around and get the measurement of the circumference all the way around that pumpkin. So lots of fun things you can do with your pumpkin. If you have a scale, you could even weigh it to see how much it weighs. All right, last but not least today, we'll be talking about our biology and physics crossover, spider webs. So you probably know all about spiders already. They are eight-legged creatures. They're actually called arachnids. They're not insects. And they build webs. And these webs are where they live. They're also where they get their food from. So we can build a spider web today to see what it's like 
when some food gets inside a spider's web, how the spider knows where the food is and how to get to it quickly. Here you need your paper plate, some yarn, and possibly some scissors and a hole punch as well. If you don't already have a plate with holes all around, make sure you punch in some holes. Try to do it as far in as possible, not quite on the circle part of the plate. And then it's also recommended to cut out that circle part of the plate. So that's why you don't want them in too far. A quick, easy way to do that is just to fold your plate in half, a little bit like a taco. And then you can get your scissors in one hand and make a snip and another snip. And that will help to open up a spot in your plate there. And then you can put your scissors in and then you can cut all around that circle part. So go ahead, get your plate all ready. This is where we're gonna make our spider web. All right, now we're gonna make our spider web. I'm gonna take one end of my yarn and I'm gonna tie it right around one of these holes here, just like this. And I'm gonna tie a knot into itself so that it always will stay in one spot. The other end will never come through. And I can just go ahead and make my spider web from there. So I tied on my spider web. And now what I can do is I can loop it through or thread it through a different hole on the other side and bring it through and thread it somewhere else. So I have all different lines going around to make my spider web. Something that makes it easier for little kids to be able to thread yarn is to take a piece of tape and to wrap it around the end of your yarn, which will help to make it a little bit more stable and to help make it so that little fingers that are still learning some fine motor skills such as this can still be able to participate, enjoy, and learn, and make their very own spider web. So I've got my yarn wrapped up there. It looks ready to go, no, um, no knots or anything. So I think I'm ready to make my spider web. So I'm just gonna poke my yarn through one of the holes on the other side. It doesn't really matter where, and then I'll pull it through so that it's straight. And then I'll put it through somewhere else and pull it again. And just kind of see where it winds up, how my spider web looks. So I'm just gonna keep putting it in random places pulling it through and just seeing what happens, getting my spider web all made up. So now that your spider web is just about done, you've pulled all the pieces of yarn tightly, but not too tightly. You don't want the paper plate to start bending. And you've also got a piece of yarn in all of your holes and you've got the extra tied off in the back. You can see my little tie right there. You are ready to start experimenting with your spider web. You can do this by yourself. You can put your hand on one spot and try to pretend you're some food that lands in a different spot and seeing if you're in a good enough position to be able to feel where the food is because then you can know that it's there and you can go right over to it. Or you can also have someone else pretend like they're the food. And you can close your eyes with your hand on your web and someone else can put their hand on in a different spot and you can see if you can feel just where they are. And the spiders can feel these vibrations with the sensory hairs that they have in their legs. So if a spider senses a weak vibration, it doesn't really feel too much, it usually just ignores it. It thinks, oh, maybe that's just the wind or maybe the tree branch that I built my web on is moving. 
and it won't think too much of it. If the spider feels a really strong vibration, they might think that it's a predator. Maybe it's a human knocking down their web by accident. Maybe they didn't realize it was there until it was too late. Maybe it's a different animal brushing around and didn't realize the web was there either. Or it's an animal that wants to eat the spider. That can happen too sometimes. So if it's too strong, the spider says, oops, I need to go run and hide and it'll protect itself rather than trying to find where the food is if it's too strong. If the vibration is just right, a Goldilocks vibration, if you will, then the spider will know, okay, I think some food's here. I'm gonna go see where it is. And then I might have myself a little tasty snack. So today we did four fun and simple activities based on things that are usually associated with Halloween. So we talked about bones and our skeleton. We talked about static electricity using ghosts. We talked about spider webs. And we also talked about plants. In this case, we used a pumpkin. I hope you had a lot of fun joining today. And I hope that you'll stay tuned right here on our YouTube channel for more fun science and craft videos coming your way. You can subscribe to our channel so you never miss another video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.